Well, a warm welcome to you from the Kawasaki Todoroki Stadium. Things have gone from bad to worse for the home side for Kawasaki Frontale. Two consecutive defeats, as you can see there, against FC Tokyo and then against Yokohama FC. And they find themselves at the start of this game rooted in 12th in this J League. And to put that into some context, they are the team that has dominated the J-League in recent seasons. Are they doing anything but dominate in this campaign? They've won four of the last six J-League titles. They won it two seasons ago. They lost their title in the end to Yokohama Marinos last season, but only two points behind them. And that a season after winning the title by 13 points in the previous campaign. Today they face Kashiwa Reysol side, who were very, very fortunate to come away with a draw against the league leaders Vissel Kobe last time. That remarkable own goal, but it was a game that Kashiwa very nearly came away and won after the huge slice of luck. They were so close to making the most of it. And the question today is whether they can build on that. But as you can see, both sets of players gathered and ready. Can Kawasaki Frontale rediscover their imperious form? There is one good bit of news for them today. Leandro Damiao doesn't start, but he is available to take his place on the bench. He has been the player they have missed the most. And maybe if the Brazilian can get back to full fitness, it could change everything. It'll be a good crowd here, and they'll be desperate to see their side turn things around. 14 wins against 11 in the head-to-head -head between these two over the years. It's been a long while since Kashiwa Reiso beat Kawasaki Frontale in the J-League. August 2016, a 5-2 victory here. They might just fancy their chances today. Their problem will be goals. And they will be serenaded as they come out. It's all suitably surreal before the game gets underway. When they won three in a row, we thought that Toro Aniki's team had found their mojo, that that could be the beginning of the charge, but they've lost two since. They're desperate to go on some kind of run. And once again, will it be the new dawn today rather than the false one? Our referee, Fatoshi Nakamura, leading the teams out here. And Kawasaki Frontale, of course, start as favourites. There's Kobayashi starting a game for the first time in this campaign. The Kashiwa Reysol will believe if they can just hold on to Frontale, then they might even find a way to win here.
he's the key man. Number 19, Mao Hosoya. Huge problems in front of goal for Kashiwa Reysol in terms of creating chances as well. Kawasaki Frontali without those issues, really. But goodness me, they need to start making things happen. Well, Toru Oniki continues to search for that perfect blend of players, and he makes four changes to the side that lost 2-1 at Yokohama FC last weekend. The former Kashiwa Reysol player, Takuma Ominami, returns in defence. Yasuto Wakizaka restored to the midfield three alongside Joao Schmidt. He adds real steel, and there is a first start of the season for the veteran Yu Kobayashi, who plays ahead of Daya Tono, Taisei Miyashiro and Akihiro Iyanaga either side of him. But on paper, on the face of it, that looks a very strong frontale side. <laughs> Kyohei Navarizato captaining frontale. Tayo Koga, the captain of Kashiwa. Suke Nakobe and Naomi Teshiroki, the assistants here. And there is our VAR team led by Hiroyuki Kimura, the Suke Kubota, the assistant. Well, Masami Ihara makes one change for his second J League game in charge of Kashiwa Reysol. Tomoki Takamine is fit to start in the centre of midfield after his buffeting last week against Vissel Kobe. And the change comes a little further forward. Kea Sento in for Matias Savio in that creative role in behind the top scorer, Mao Hosoya. He has four of Kashiwa's nine goals so far this season. Only he and Ichi Katayama, the left back, have scored in this campaign. In the match day squad with uh, Matias Savio out of it. The other goal was the Remarkable own goal in that game against Vissel Kobe last week. Big day for him. He did score Yu Kobayashi in the one all draw against Kashiwa Reysol last year. Ianaga's got a great goal scoring record against them. And there's Hosoya, who will hope to get more involved, really, than he did last weekend. So Kawasaki Frontale against Kashiwa Reysol is today the day that Frontale find their form. Two defeats in a row. Frontale in the blue and black, kicking from left to right in the first half. The colours based on Brazilian team Gremio, so many Brazilian influences in Japanese football. Is Wakizaka. Well, that's a really clever reverse, and Ian Aga plays it across. What a start this is! Just wide. Nearly the perfect start. Kobayashi pounced. Just couldn't quite steer it inside the post. That's more like it. This is such a clever ball from Wakizaka. Defensive error at the far post by Kawaguchi, but goes unpunished, for now anyway. Corner inside the opening minute for Frontale. Only once here in the J League all season. The win against Sagan Tosu. Forward by Niki Yamane. And so now at least Kashiwa Reysol with a chance just to breathe. Is that chance again for Kobayashi? It was a good defensive challenge in the end that denied him. It's Ominami, new arrival 
this campaign from Kashiwa Reysol. Five goals in 77 J-League appearances for the team against whom he plays today. Both teams have taken a while to settle on their number one goalkeeper, Kami Fukumoto. Started seven in a row for Kawasaki Frontale. Matsumoto makes his uh, ninth start of the season. He's the third goalkeeper that Shiba Reisol used in this campaign after Morita and Sasaki. But they both seem settled now. Here's Joao Schmidt, who always seems to make a difference in that midfield for Kawasaki Frontale. Now Ianaga. in this campaign, Kawasaki Frontale. They are creating chances, but not taking them as they've done in their glory days. And the glory days, remember, are very, very recent. This is by no means a faded giant, just one that's seemingly sleeping at the start of this season. Nicely done here. This is Kobayashi. The focal point goes over, but... Not even he appeals. No foul for the penalty, but there was a subsequent one. We'll take there from Kobayashi. Consider that Ian Aga is 36, two of the front three with a combined age of 71, along with the youngster Miyashiro. And you do look at them going forward from this campaign. Even when Leandro Damiao does come back, and that may well be today off the bench, he's 33 as well. We have to start looking around and strengthening and thinking of years to come. Here's Joao Schmidt. Now Ominami. been a positive start this from Kawasaki Frontale now Ianaga to hit one and it's well blocked by Matsumoto he saw the opening and he caught that well it's certainly a save the goalkeeper should make still a good strike still a useful start this from Kawasaki Frontale Wakizaka with the corner. Climb the there was by Kurumaya. Is that strike again from Ianaga?
Yeah, he'll be happier. But he wants a string of results, Toru Aniki. He is a serial winner, four-time J-League winner. Koyamatsu. Ominami. Camine. A few passes together, nice and neat there. The flag stays down. It may go up in a moment. Yeah, it does. Naomi Teshirogi doing the right thing there, just allowing play to continue in case he's well offside. Finish wasn't there at all. Well, Asami Ihara taking over from El Sino a couple of weeks ago. This only his uh, second J League game in charge. Both his teams beaten in the J League Cup in the week. The J League right now is where the focus is. Fukumoto, very good with his feet out there and joining in. Now Kuramaya. Here's Ominami. Now Ianaga. Kick that pass out in the far post. And he wasn't far off doing it. Nikki Yamane making the run. A lot of space here for Akihiro Ianaga. It's always over the head. Not crushing Miyashiro in the far post. One back by Kurumaya. Oshima. Another of their hugely experienced players. Turn from Wakizaka. And still goes Wakizaka. He feels he was being fouled. Thought he was being lent on here as he was going for the return. And I've got some sympathy with that view. Not enough to take a look at it. Takamine. Sawyer's touch let him down. One back, though, by Takamine. Is Sento. Really good start here from Kawasaki Frontale. Dominating possession, 70% in the opening 10 minutes. Still nothing to show for it. Still maybe vulnerable at the other end, but that's excellent from Kami Fukumoto. Off his line so quickly. Much better, though, from Frontale, but it has to start leading to results. It's Oshima. Now Takamine bounces through. 
true for Kami Fukamoto. Kurumaya is the Inaga. Now Schmidt. Bit away and has been a season littered with errors. Points thrown away really by Kawasaki Frontale to lose. Two in a row is one thing, but for those games to be against FC Tokyo and then Yokohama FC. Uh, really poor displays. And he gives it out as well, Takamine. Seemingly had a one-man battle with the uh, El Kobe midfield last week, which many of those little duels he won. Kobe Ashi on the end of that at 35 years of age. They hurt a little bit more the older you get. He scored the winner at Kyoto Sanga, very last minute of the game, off the bench. Gloriously for him, but... Still short of his best form. Matsumoto has things organised. Oshima as they change the angle really well. Goalkeeper was in no man's land for a moment. That very nearly worked out perfectly and they're going to get another chance here. One or two of these Kawasaki Frontale players are getting frustrated. That is late and high. That should have been a yellow card for Sento. You can see the frustration there. And this one, it's a very good effort, but it's always started just a bit too wide at that near post. See, from that position, he knows pretty soon Matsumoto. I know that Wakizaka's got real quality, though.
was uh, Nelsinho's assistant for four years, Masami Ihara, and he gets the big job. A big slice of luck last week in his debut game in charge. A remarkable own goal by the league leaders, Vissel Kobe. If that cost them at the end of the season, those are two points. They will rue that moment. There's Joao Schmidt. Kawasaki Frontale happy to keep possession and then look to build with it. Fine diagonal from Joao Schmidt, touch of a hand about the control. Had that led to something, I'm sure we would have gone back and looked at that. Loves to get forward down that left-hand side, Navarizato. It was OK, it was off the chest. side for Yamane, real sense of control about Frontale at the moment. Now the search for a cutting edge continues. Ianago. Such a poor giveaway. season grabs his second goal and grabs them the lead it came here from the defensive error Kobayashi stealing in behind and that's a very good finish Kashiwa helped out by a big defensive error last week committing one of their own this week and made to pay thing he can do is finish. Scored against Kashiwa last season, does so again here. Kobayashi the man. There's Joao Schmidt. here Kashi were rattled by not just conceding the goal but the way that they conceded it 
Great tackle, Ianaga. Now Schmidt. Confidence here for Antale at the moment. Ian Aga. Starting to look a little like a different team. Maybe today could be the day. There's Wakizaka. Fukumoto. Just got to get themselves out of playing inside their final third. That's the error. It was the uh, excellent finish. And always good when a defensive player puts up his hand and it's the error. All they've got to do is respond as a team. Score the next goal, they're still. behind by Ian Aga. Very good service from out wide. They've got Ian Aga into some excellent position so far. This time they were pushing and probing down that left-hand side, trying to bring Novorizato into it. Look at that, eight shots to none in Frontale's favour. The key goal from Yu Kobayashi. Three of those eight on target. He won the uh, excellent finish by Kobayashi.
Joshua Schmidt. chance maybe to get in behind but once again Kami Fukamoto he makes the odd error but that positivity from off his line serves them very well Referee decided it was a foul. He then committed a foul after the ball had gone. That would have earned him a yellow card. Wakizaka presses me every time I see him. In the centre of that Rotale midfield. And Yamada. Sawyer's so offside, is he? Yeah. Difficult job for Mao Hosoya. Trying to keep offering himself, gets through a lot of work. There is a great deal of service, but when they have those little half glimpses, he's got to make better runs than that. bottom corner this has probably been their best half hour of the season so far should have more to show for it this is a great chance he sees it all the way got up well just couldn't direct it in the right place he missed by a long way Now 
Joao Schmidt. Hosoya couldn't quite squeeze it in between the posts, but this is the danger that comes with the way that he plays. And actually, when you see it again, Hosoya should score. Was he quite on his toes enough? Slipped as he hit it. Ianaga, now Wakizaka. Imane with the ball across. Action at both ends. Good stop by Matsumoto. Both teams coming desperately close. Terrific game, this. Just held his run here, Yamane. It's a good adjustment as well from Miyashiro. was deflected he did really well to divert that on goal he's slightly unlucky there Taisei Miyashiro nearly adding to his four goals in this campaign from him, Joao Schmidt to play it across. So close to picking out the run at the far post. They really should be more than a goal to the good here. It's poor defending here to allow Miyashiro to turn back inside. Just didn't get it right, did he? As long as it's only 1-0, Amiki will worry. Very good headed chance, and then with the opportunity to pick out a teammate at the far post. Still a lot of time to go, but Kawasaki Frontale convincingly on top at the moment. Sent 
Pinto. Katayama. Looking for some uh, good memories from the first half here. There haven't been too many, although Hasoya did go close. That was half a chance, you know. Sat up nicely there for Kota Yamada. Yet to score for Yashima Reysol. Did you miss Matthias Savio, I think, just playing in that hole? Kaya Seto doesn't really offer what he does. Straight in player, the Brazilian, no question, but real qualities. Swakizaka. Now Ianaga. Kawasaki again. They're being allowed to play here. Kawasaki Frontale is Sento. Did well that time to find Hosoya. Hosoya's done really well with the reverse, but. Chance comes to nothing. Good bit of defending there because the Sawyer is very strong and quick. Kobayashi's goal separates them. He's involved again here. Wakizaka now. Oh, lofted through gloriously. Just wouldn't quite sit down. What an assist that would have been. And on reflection, could he have taken it on the volley? Ianaga, he's having an excellent game. Oramaya. Turn from Miyashiro, there's the Borisato! Up and over, and behind, Tatsuta on the stretch, Kobayashi was closing in. Here's the ball from Wakizaka. Space. I just wondered and still do as it dropped over his shoulder could he have stretched and caught it on the volley it would have been a, a difficult skill his like third corner of the game comes to nothing Off Kawasaki Frontale, and that's deflected through. It's a good save. The hit was by Yu Kobayashi, and Matsumoto does very well with an awkward one there. Ianaga. Bursting through is Yamane. And Kobayashi, but. Held on to by the goalkeeper. Lovely slick build-up play this, though. Team full of confidence. That's a very good save. There's the deflection, and it just stays within range for him. from uh, Kami Fukumoto and very nearly squeezed it in between the posts. 
That will warn Kawasaki Frontale that 1-0 is no kind of lead. They've had enough possession and domination of the game. Possession particularly in that final third. More than uh, a goal to the good, they've had chances too. But it's just the one taken by Yu Kobayashi at the moment. There's Ianaga. It's a handball, isn't it? Yeah. Alfred was Katayama. Got a much clearer cut than that. First half, it's been a really interesting one, largely because Kawasaki Frontali have played so well and with such confidence it's been lacking. Still only a goal to show for it though. Still a long way to go. Seconds of the first half, then as we look to get me a Shiro in behind again. Just a minute to be added. We've got the balance right here today so far. Toru Oniki. Everything starting with Matsumoto. Ianaga has been outstanding. Wakizaka, as he always seems to be. Trying to control things from that midfield. Kobayashi has found the goal. Final attack of the half here for Kawasaki Frontale. Lovely touch there from Wakizaka, and it opens up the goal number two that is thrashed in by Kyohei Noborizato. What a sweet strike that is. Although he's been injured in the process. How well does he take this? Lovely touch from Wakizaka. That's a super goal. There's the key touch to get it out from his feet. There's his second of the campaign. He hadn't scored since 2017. Now he's got two in the space of a month. And it's a cruel old time for Kashiwa to concede, but it's no more. The Kawasaki Frontale deserve. The Borizato has been hurt in the celebration. Memories of Steve Morrow in a different way. After that cup final win for Arsenal, a shoulder injury by the looks of things. And they're going to have to make the change, and what a horrible moment that is. Boris 
Rosato will play no further part, but he has played a crucial part. Kobayashi gave Kawasaki Frontale the lead. 20 minutes in, and then as we've just seen, that sweet, sweet strike from that man, Naborazato, who may yet be okay to carry on, actually, up to his feet. And okay, Leandro Damiao leads the congratulations, because that is Kawasaki's Frontale's best half of the season so far. Ian Aga, the man in your picture there, has been excellent. Kawasaki have been far too good at the moment. Can they build on it? in the second half. At half-time here, it's Kawasaki Frontale 2, Kashiwa Reysol 0.
Well, he has cards to play, Masami Ihara, and he's playing a couple of them here. J. Roy Grot on at half time for Kota Yamada and Yuki Muto. No great surprise there. Kea Sento struggled to make an impact on the game. So he is uh, made way. Grot brings up a very different uh, perspective to things. Giant centre forward who certainly ruffled a few Vissel Kobe feathers last week and may even have won them the game. Navarrezato is OK. Having landed on his shoulder after scoring the goal, he's fine to carry on and the home fans are delighted about that. I must say, it would have been a, a really awful way to have picked up any kind of significant injury, but he's fine. Scores again, he won't be doing that. You can still see there's some pain in there, but it's obviously nothing dislocated or anything serious, which is uh, extremely good news. So the big man will hope to make a difference. New arrival from Viborg, scored twice in the J League Cup against the Vispa. There is only goals for. Kashiwa Reiso, Muto, his third year at the club, scored also in the J League Cup against Albirex, but nothing in the J League so far. Seven in the last campaign, so he can be a threat. Let's see. Kawasaki Frontale leading Kashiwa Reiso by two goals to nil at half time in the blue and black kick from right to left in this second half and Kashiwa have made two forward changes here as Sami Ihara hopes to turn the tide of this game but the way Frontale have gone about things well it's going to be tough for Kashiwa Reiso there's Joao Schmidt Center of that midfield, just holding things together and controlling. Sawyer, and I think they probably had a case. Rock tends to just take a while to get himself settled into a game, but when he does, if he gets a chance to run into open space, he can be a real threat. Takamine. And again, Takamine. Now has Sawyer. Can he find a way through? to play an excellent pass but Kawaguchi no quality on the cross now Takamine that runs away from uh, Tomoya Koyamatsu sent on to try and uh, turn this round. Just try and give that man, Hosoya, a little bit more support here. He's had Kashiwa's big chance after the error from uh, Kame Fukumoto, the goalkeeper. Rot had a great chance to win the game last week, drank it wide, he burst through on goal. with his first contribution. Rock trying to weave his 
way through. He felt he was fouled. The referee disagreed. His feet settled here. We're just nicked enough for the ball. I think Grant had a case there. But that soon breaks down. Yamane earning the corner. Schmidt. It's been a really dominant display this from Kawasaki Frontale. Need to be careful here though. She will find a way to goal very nearly. Far away at all. Rock wanted it played earlier than that. It's unfortunate it didn't take a slight deflection there. They go to the league leaders Vissel Kobe next. They've got a home game against San Frecce Hiroshima. Does it get any easier for Kawasaki Frontale? of that challenge now if they can welcome this man back it really will be a big day Leandro Damião former J League player of the year prolific Brazilian 23 goals a couple of seasons ago as they won the league key player for Oniki fifth year at the club and absolutely vital much of Oniki's reign Back and starting the difference will be enormous. Roy Grock.
striker to spread it wide. Oh, lovely interplay again to tee up the chance. It would have been a really glorious team goal, but off the woodwork. Should be 3 0, should be the end of that. Oshima will be furious that he didn't take the chance. Such a, a signature Kawasaki Frontale goal as well. Novorizato opens things up and surely, but Ianaga couldn't quite nick it over the challenge. Suddenly, Kashira looking a little bit ragged here and maybe there for the taking. Joao Schmidt manoeuvring it into a shooting position. Nearly teased in perfectly for Wakizaka. Here's that moment again. He thought he'd scored, he thought he'd done everything right here. Ryota Oshima. Always wanted it on his left foot to go narrow side. And a Borizato. Cabine. Touch there by Grot. Moment. Kawasaki winning every single duel here. It's going to be a first yellow card of the game. Tug on the shirt. Just reached out and grabbed there. The substitute Yuki Muto. Infringements, the ones really the referees have to punish. Even when a referee's looking to be lenient, as this one is, uh, still goes into the book. Kashiwa raced on if they could take a chance, and Grot had one. And on the turn, he blazed over. This is better from them. Difficult to hook it, just around himself here. Signs of improvement from his side, Ihara. He's taking over from uh, Nelsinho. Had been Nelsinho's second spell in charge. The previous one had brought six trophies. Back after they tried five coaches in the meantime, they thought he was the answer, but hasn't proved to be the case. Back since 2019, but now under new leadership. They are still somehow 
in this game if they could pull a goal back. Tali have been so dominant, they're going to have to be more clinical. They're going to have any kind of uh, run at the J League this year. There's still time for them. Many of stories in recent years of teams starting slowly and then pushing, going on a great run to move themselves towards the top of the table. That's still wide open this season. And the Borisato scorer of that outstanding second goal. We have half an hour to play. Chase, but he's offside. Shiro, he tried his luck from probable range. Is Wakizaka. Wackizaka. Support rising in the center. Shintaro Kurumaya now and miscued that completely. Here's the second goal again. How well did he take that? Here's the moment where the shoulder was hurt, just there as he was grabbed. All those years ago, I mentioned uh, Steve Morrow after that cup win for Arsenal. That happened when Tony Adams, in his less considered days maybe, as he would admit himself, picked up Steve Morrow and dropped him over his shoulder. Steve Morrow was never quite the same again, and Tony Adams still says that he uh, regrets that moment more than so many moments that he regrets. Trying with that guilt. That wouldn't have been quite the same, would it? So the injury's not bad, but horrible feeling if as a teammate in the course of something as banal as celebrating a goal, you uh, do some serious damage. Better in this second half so far. Here's Muto. Should have tried to tee it up. Kawaguchi. There's a Soya. She were race old. They're almost the epitome of the team that 
looks good until the final third. All the stats would suggest that's what they are. Nine goals all season, four from this man, Hasoya, three from Matias Savio, only one other player has scored. They've had one shot on target today. That wasn't the best chance. The best chance was the goalkeeping error that fell to Hasoya, and his shot was just off target. Percent possession, Kashiwa Raisol and can play well in the modern game with uh, with that sort of figure, but you'd need to be playing at a much higher tempo than this. And sort of waiting game isn't really suiting them. It's the team with all the possession who's playing at the tempo. Kawasaki Frontale. If they hold on to this or extend it, Oniki will be delighted with this display from his uh, Frontale team. Kobayashi 20 minutes in and then Nabarizato finish on the stroke of half time. They nearly played their way into trouble there. Here is Nabarizato. Last time Kashiwa beat Kawasaki Frontale was in the quarter final of the Emperor's Cup in October 2017. And haven't looked close to beating them here six years on from that moment. Change for the home side. Kazuki Kozuka replacing Rata Oshima, who should have made it 3 0 in the second half. There's uh, Chana Tip off on a warm up, the, uh, the Thai international. Kizaka once couldn't uh, pick out the final pass. First touch there for Kazuka. Second substitute appearance of the campaign, the former Oita Trinidad player. That's laid back quite beautifully. Here's Naborizato again. Time for a corner, it might have been more. Kawasaki Frontale. Suto Wakazaka to take. The follow up's outstanding. Schmidt was closing in and it never reached him. Miyashiro, I think, got there first. Timed his jump, came off the top of his head. It's a great chance to make it 3 0. Change for Kashiwa and Hiromu, Mitsumaru on for Aichi Katayama, former Sagan Tosu player. And, uh, 12 starts in this campaign, having been left out last week. As a, as a sub for the second week in a row. Not in favour at the moment under the new coach, Mitsumaru. Kurumaya and the Boris 
Sato. Shiro might get a second chance here. They've just about managed to clear it away. Right, though, when they play with that lovely one-touch flow, they do look an outstanding team, don't they, Frontale? This does feel like a win, if indeed it turns into a win on which they could build. As for Nara and Kashiwa, they've got a home game against Consadoli Sapporo and then Away at uh, Yokohama Marinas after that, it won't get much easier for them. Tough run of games as he takes over. Vissel Kobe, then Frontale, and uh, those two, Monsa and Marinos. Now, at the Kawasaki Todoroki Stadium, home team look comfortable. the player who's available here. Now Joao Schmidt. Here come Kawasaki Frontale again. Time it was plucked out of the air by Matsumoto and there was a rather unnecessary challenge on the goalkeeper. Deliberately so, but maybe a uh, lack of consideration from Wakizaka. Was it the elbow he left in here? And it was. Well, we're going to see Douglas making his fourth substitute appearance of the season. Koyamatsu, the player who makes way for the, uh, the big Brazilian. hit of late but 21 goals he scored for San Frecce eight J League seasons ago tell you what he is capable of and there's still time there is still time if uh, Shewa could find a way forward players, Ianaga. It's probably the cross, but it was beyond everybody. Miyashiro has got himself into a lot of good positions so far. He was in at the far post again there. He's been a man, though, Ianaga. Hard to control the pace of the game from 
out wide, but it felt as if he has. Just be that lingering thought from Toro and Iki that the game ought to be won. They should be out of sight and they're not. It won't affect them, but it's not a good habit to get into. Borizato. Very high from Kobayashi. In fact, he's going to get a card for it. <laughs> it might seem harsh, but you've got to be aware of what's around you. It's just something you can't do. Time to recover here, and in fact, Takumi Tsuchiya, the 19 year old, is gonna just go off on a warm up just to make sure he's okay should they need him. Well, we still haven't seen him, Leandro Damiao, an observer rather than a participant at the moment. No prizes for guessing which set of fans is the happier right now. across to uh, check that all is okay it's a really painful one though yeah he's going to be fine Hugo Tatsuta from the Shimizu player new arrival in this campaign he's done well the heart of that defense and there's the culprit It's a funny one, isn't it, with the overhead kick? If Kobayashi had made that challenge front on, with his foot that high, it'd have been sent off. I'm not suggesting he should have been, by the way, but it's strange how things work, that we almost forgive that overhead, don't we? We book him, and he has actually kicked an opponent in the head. I don't think Tatsuta wants to come off here, but they might take it out of his hands. Yeah, they're going to. Bring on Sushia to uh, to see them home, and given the state of Tatsuta at the moment, that looks like the right call. No point taking any kind of risk. So the player gets a 
sympathetic round of applause and uh, we'll do all the checks with him and I'm sure he'll be fine for next week. Come an important player, he's made 12 starts this season. Hugo Tatsuta and he gets a nice round of applause from what is still uh, his new fan base. On comes then the teenager Takumi Tsushia, only making the eighth appearance of his professional career. So every second counts for him. Wakizaka. Now J. Roy Grot. is all about whether they could produce in the final third and once again they couldn't uh, what can he do to change that aspect of their play Ehara can't just rely on a Sawyer Over 20,000 here at the Kawasaki Todoroki Stadium. There are the travelling fans who won't stop singing and dreaming and believing. J League winners in 2011. Last silverware was 10 years ago, the League Cup. Rather like their hosts, they have slipped in this campaign. They were seventh last season, started this weekend in 15th. This their fourth season back after relegation.
back there. Kazuka, and that's very late. On another day, that might have ended differently for Yuki Muto. Well, that's forward at pace. It would have been some skill for Miyashiro to run in behind and control this, but it was nearly on for him. Intended target. They might have a corner though. They do. And there will be uh, a fair amount of time added at the end, remember, after the uh, the injury to Tatsuta. Mitsumaru to take. By substitute Douglas, but he couldn't keep it down. Well directed, and he climbed well enough. Challenge for Frontale, Yasuke Sagawa on for Miyashiro, who's done everything but score, hasn't he? Scored twice in this campaign against Shonan in the uh, normal draw and in the 4 3 win at Consa. Ninth substitute appearance of the campaign for him as we tick towards the final three minutes of normal time. Maybe just getting a feel of things, and certainly a sign that he's not fully fit. Don't play him unless you need to at the moment. Given that they're at home and they are winning the game fairly comfortably. So I'm surprised in front of the home fans that they haven't brought him on almost welcome him back, almost in a ceremonial sense. Nice idea over the 
the top. Ianaga chased for a bit and realised he wasn't going to get there. And we move into the final minute of normal time, I would suspect. We'll have at least six, five or six added minutes here. A long old delay, that, for the injury to Tansuta. for that challenge hurt himself in the process yeah that's late that ends up being a stamp from Toshima five added minutes At the very least it could have been Joao Schmidt had one of those borderline ones earlier in the campaign in that uh, late win at Kyoto Sanga he went into a challenge and they uh, took an age to decide whether or not they were going to ask the referee to look again and in the end they didn't. He would have been off, I think, if they had. That wasn't far away, but he was late and high. He needs to be careful with the way that he challenges, I think, the Brazilian. His need to dive in like that. again to make it three and again they can't take it Kobayashi frustrated that he doesn't grab a second goal he's very good in the air very good run he's picked out superbly it's just a finish this wasn't quite there from you Kobayashi fitness I think time has gone now for Kashiwa Racel they're fortunate not to be further behind but they're not even going to take advantage of that and they've got difficult games coming against Konsa and against the Marinos here's Douglas it's a good hit from him and the second shot on target anyway for them. It's an easy hold, isn't it, for Kami Fukamoto. Often doesn't make things look easy, the goalkeeper, but he grabs that pretty well. I think it was looping just wide anyway. Promising signs from them towards the end of the game. Much too little, very much too late from uh, Kashiwa Racel. And I think this could be a significant day for Kawasaki Frontale because they haven't nicked this game. When they uh, won those three in a row, away against the Vispa and Kyoto Sanga, then at home against Sagan Toshu, they, they weren't convincing. Today they have been. 
Today they've looked like their old selves and they may just march on from this, their second home win of this J-League season. And the team that's dominated, I think four of the last six J-League titles, they may just be back. This will move them into the top ten, make it three or four wins in a row, play like this and who knows where you are in about a month. May yet be Kawasaki Frontale's time. They play like this every week, they'll go close. Well, they've been far too good here. They started the game on the front foot, they eventually took advantage of that when Yu Kobayashi gave them the lead and the goal on the stroke of half-time from Kyohei Naborizato was the uh, real hammer blow and that's led to the win. There's the punch of the air from Toru Oniki. Means the world to him. Ihara still searching for a first win in charge of Kashiwa Reisol but he was up against an outstanding team here and that's the best I would venture that these fans have seen in this campaign, home or away. Kobayashi led them, set them on their way, then Naborizato, the captain, with the second. Can they keep up this form? 1-3-7, the figure now for Yu Kobayashi. They keep that running total. Can this veteran campaigner and one or two other veterans lead them still? somewhere special in this campaign. You would never write them off for Kashiwa. They need to start scoring goals. They need to start finding a way to make the most of their excellent play up to that final third. They've got tough challenges to come, and they've had a tough challenge here today, one that they weren't really good enough to meet. Kawasaki, Frontale, far too good, and they won it by two goals to nil. So really, really positive day for Toru Oniki and his side. And there haven't been too many of those in this campaign. The smile there, they're the two goal scorers. Kobayashi says it all, doesn't it? Delighted with that. And there's a coach who is, I have to say, already under pressure. Masami Ihara taking over from Nelsinho, having been part of that regime. Never the most popular choice, that. And he needs to start making things happen. He's desperate for that first win, but it was a long way from coming here. See, Grot and Douglas just didn't work, did they, as substitutes in the end? Maybe uh, back to the drawing board time for Ihara. All smiles, though, for Kami and for the home team. Really tight group. Many of them have been together for a while. Nice photo moment there between uh, Kobayashi and Naborizato, and now time for the post-match huddle. Damiao with a big smile on his face as well. Important moments, these. And there's their celebration. They hope to be celebrating much more throughout the rest of the campaign. And how significant it will be when Damiao can come back from that injury. And it was good to see him there as part of the group, joining in the celebration. If he could hit form, then Kawasaki Frontale is certainly creating enough to mean that he may yet make hay. Things will turn. Makashi were race all, they're a good side. They're just a good side that is short of a goal scorer. Matthias Savio will improve them when he returns. Grot maybe will get amongst the goals. Douglas certainly could do. But uh, it may yet take a while for Ihara to get those wheels turning for Kashiwa Reiso. Here's the man of the moment. A big smile of Yu Kobayashi. Who set them on their way and may have even grabbed a second. Impressive that he lasted the 90 as well, Kobayashi. 
貴重な追加点を挙げました、上里恭平選手にお越しいただきました、おめでとうございます。ありがとうございますまずゴールシーン振り返っていただきたいんですが、ボールを受け直してから、利き足じゃない、右足で決めていきました、あのゴールシーン振り返ってください。そうですねもう本当に練習でも出ないような、あのー、シュートだったので,で6年間ゴールしてなかったですしで前のアウェーで福岡戦で取れて